What's going on everyone, it's Justin here and today I'm back with another cool tech episode. So in this episode, we're checking out a lot of new products that have arrived in the office recently. And as always, there is a huge variety, whether it is smartphones with great cameras, the new lineup of MacBooks that have the new M2 chip in the MacBook Pro, as well as the Mac mini, as well as a whole bunch of other awesome gadgets and accessories that I'm really excited for you guys to see. There are also some products for the desk setup, the kitchen, as well as day-to-day -day EDC products, and that is what the Cool Tech series is all about. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the first product. So another really cool product that I checked out in the holiday season is the Nothing Earbuds. This is a company that is really trying to push the limits of revolutionizing traditional tech products, including smartphones and earbuds. And similar to what the founders did with OnePlus, it's to offer products that have great tech features, great design at relatively affordable prices, competitive in their category. This Nothing model is not necessarily the cheapest option out there, but it has active noise cancellation, great sound quality, great microphones, and before we go into the details of that, take a look at the design. I really like this pill-shaped design. It actually fits really nicely in the pocket, and to be able to open it, all you have to do is just roll it on the end here and it exposes the earbuds and you take it out, pop them in your ears and they're very comfortable. They come in a color of white and black and for any Android users out there, this I feel like is a really good alternative to say using Apple AirPods because I just love the design, but most importantly, the sound quality is excellent. It features 11.6 millimeter drivers, pretty good active noise cancellation, as well as three HD microphones and the battery life is about five hours on the individual earbuds, but with the case gives you over 30 hours of combined usage. And I think with the portability and the design, it is just really unique. I love the translucent element because I feel like a lot of these cases nowadays just look exactly the same. So this next product right here is the Vesta board and it is something that I've seen around and have wanted for many years now, but it costs over $3,000. It is a smart messaging board that emulates the manual flipboards that you see in a lot of European airports and I've always wanted one for the house because I just think it looks so cool. You're able to fully customize the message on screen or the image and you can also go through the entire database of different quotes in the inspiration category as well as motivation, today's picks, as well as stuff that other people have created to be able to put a message on the board and even have the opportunity to customize it from scratch. Some of the other creative and useful ideas could also be having like the flight schedule, the team to-do list, for example, as well as menus if you decide to put this in a restaurant. And I think it's just like a really fun way to display information. It is really interesting to watch and the setup process was really easy. The app was easy to connect and it's also really fast and responsive. So from a refinement standpoint, it definitely checks all the boxes and the expectations that I had. With Vestaboard Plus, you can also integrate with Google Calendar as well as your favorite sports scores. And that includes stuff like Formula One, NHL, and I think that is what I personally would like to use it for, but it does come at an additional cost. The biggest thing that I'm really trying to figure out here is whether it is worth over $3,000. I've wanted one for a very long time and it has met all my expectations and I think it looks incredible, but I just don't know how much I would be changing the information manually on there. But if I go ahead and connect it to my calendar, my schedule or sports scores, for example, it could actually have a great utility for it. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to enjoy that. So if you're looking for a really fun toy that works great, has good integrations, and functionally is very well executed, then I feel like it is worth it, but I think that is up to each individual person as to how much you value the information or the usability of something like the Vestaboard. So at this time of year, OnePlus has just announced their brand new smartphone, and that is the OnePlus 11. It comes in this very beautiful color right here, and I think this has a really good balance of that mirror finish, but you can also see it has an all new camera design. The partnership from Hasselblad is back, and that is a big focus this year because it features a triple camera setup that are all very high resolution, and it's always nice to have the combination of the high resolution image capability throughout its lens setup, but also the option to shoot at a standard 12 megapixel Pixel resolution to have manageable file sizes. In this camera here, you have a 50 megapixel f1.8 24 millimeter wide main camera, 32 megapixel f2.0 48 millimeter telephoto camera, as well as a 40 
48 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide camera. And on top of that, you also have other upgrades under the hood, including the processors and of course the display and the software, something that we're very familiar with. And I'm gonna be talking about more on the channel, but I think the big area of focus here, as you can see, both in terms of the design and integration of it is the camera tech. And I almost feel like it looks a bit like a vintage film camera in a way. And I've definitely been liking to collect a lot of vintage accessories lately. So the next product right here is a super cool gadget and I love checking out things for the kitchen, whether it was like the smart toaster in the past, the Bartesian, coffee makers, and this is an accessory that I've had uh, some experience with, but this is their latest Arc Carbonator Pro. First off, it looks incredible. I used to have one in gold, but I went with like a sand black finish, which actually ties in a lot with OnePlus featured in this video. And what's great about this is that you're able to make fresh carbonated sparkling water at any time, exactly the way that you would like. It uses the standard CO2 carbonation tanks that you also find in the soda stream, for example. But personally, I've really like not enjoyed the taste of soda streams in the past because it just has a very weird artificial flavor, but I love carbonated water and this is able to do that. You're able to use different bottle sizes and adjust the height of it, but the concept is very simple. Just go ahead and fill it up with water, attach it to the mechanism and press the button and you can carbonate the water at different levels that you enjoy, whether you want it to be relatively light or you want it to be very carbonated. This is a great experience to be able to have at home and enjoy at any time. So this is definitely a kitchen gadget that we really enjoy having in the office, but we're also gonna put one in my house because I mean, it's just super awesome. And I also think it looks amazing. So because this channel talks a lot about technology, innovation, and the future of so many industries, I also wanna talk about BMO and their ARC ETFs. And I wanna give a huge thanks to BMO for sponsoring this video. BMO's ARC ETFs are packaged for Canadians and the team conducts an investment process that combines top-down and bottom-up research, meaning ARC's experts ensure extensive of research before adding any investments to their ETFs. They aim to identify innovation early, capitalize on the opportunities, and provide long-term value to investors, and are great for someone like myself who understands and loves the tech industry, but wants a relatively simple and streamlined investment experience through ETFs. The main ETF fund is the BMO ARC Innovation Fund, which aims to identify early stages of growth as well as innovation in the tech industry through five major categories. These categories include artificial artificial intelligence, energy storage, robotics, DNA sequencing, and blockchain technology. And through having multiple categories, the diversity of this fund is very important, especially while the economy is going through its largest technological transformation right now. There's also a BMO ARC Genomic Revolution Fund that focuses more on tech and health. And if that is a category that you're familiar or interested in, this could be a good option as well. The genomic sequencing technology is changing the way biological information is collected, processed, and applied. And this ETF ETF focuses on increasing precision and restructuring healthcare, agriculture, pharmaceuticals, and enhancing the quality of life. This is definitely a category that I'm less familiar with, but the next one is one that I'm personally interested in because obviously I work on the internet and grew up with the internet, and that is the BMO ARC Next Generation Internet Innovation Fund. Over the last decade that I've been in the tech industry, the internet is really taking over the economy and is gonna continue to propel us into the future, and I've been able to witness that firsthand. This ETF focuses on finding companies that take a priority in changing the way the world manages information, analyzes data, purchase goods, and also communications across the globe. It includes cloud-based computing, big data, digital media e-commerce, which is an industry that we're a huge part of, blockchain technologies, as well as artificial intelligence and the internet of things. So whether it is the BMO ARC ETF Innovation Fund, the genomic technologies, or the internet of the future, there is an ETF that is right for you, whether you're looking to diversify your portfolio or focus on the sector of technological healthcare or technology and the internet. From an investment standpoint, I'm personally someone who is really interested in investing in categories that I am working in and are personally very interested about while also diversifying my investments by sticking to ETFs for the most part. And I'm gonna drop a link to more information down below. So whenever it comes to your home theater setup, we've checked out so many options on the channel over the years, whether it is laser TVs, really good projectors, as well as OLED TVs that cost over $10,000. 
Whenever somebody asks me what is the best overall TV that I can recommend that factors in value, performance, as well as a really good smart TV software system built in, and that recommendation for many years now has been TCL. I have quite a few TCL 5 Series TVs in my investment properties, and those have served as amazing options because they have smart TV built in. The one that I have right here is the TCL 6 Series, and when it comes to the price point that is available at, paired up with the features and the panel technology, I believe this is the TV that I'm gonna be recommending the most at the moment. It is available in a 55, a 65, and a 75 inch model. And the 65 inch is the one that I have right here, but it is a mini LED QLED TV. Mini LED backlight technology gives you a really nice and bright performance, especially when you're watching TV in the daytime, or for example, have a lot of light coming in from a large window or in a condo, but it's also very vibrant. The colors are incredible, and it also has a wide color gamut powered by QLED technology, which is the quantum dot. TV also features Dolby Vision, HDR, and Dolby Atmos technology. And even though I love OLED TVs, mini LED is actually what I've gone with for my own main condo living room, just because of how good of a performance it is able to deliver when it comes to brightness in a relatively bright room, but also the contrast and the colors that it's able to provide. Another webcam that I've also picked up recently is the Insta360 Link. And I've been seeing so many videos about this and I just decided to go ahead and purchase one to see what all the hype was about because I heard it was a really cool product. They're really well known for utilizing AI and camera hardware to bring so many different features for creatives out there. And they've tried to bring that over to a revolutionary webcam that is relatively different from the other offerings on the market. It is a 4K webcam. It definitely comes in at a price point that a relatively small niche I think is willing to pay for a product like this, but it is definitely action packed. It features a half inch sensor on the front here and you can see that it almost has like a gimbal layout on the front because it utilizes AI to give you features such as keeping your face in frame, being able to rotate the gimbal and stream or record vertically. The privacy mode also points it down when you're not using it. And so it is a lot smaller than I expected when it comes to its form factor, but you just go ahead and clip it on the top of your monitor. And the fact that it is able to utilize AI and smart features to ensure that you're in frame at all times really avoids the common issue of when Whenever you're joining like a conference call, for example, having to manually adjust and play with the webcam itself here and there. So I think that is a really cool and unique feature that I haven't seen on a webcam before, really focusing on the gimbal element. So another set of products that showed up in the office recently is the M2 MacBook Pro and the M2 Mac Mini. And these are definitely not like the redesign updates that I know we love, but of course there are improvements on already great products in Apple's lineup. More specifically, the MacBook Pro 14 inch in the past year has been my favorite laptop or even computer experience to date because it offers great portability an incredible display and the performance has been unmatched. And I just really love the redesign that they did in 2021 with the e evened out thickness and the port selection coming back. You have the MagSafe return, you have Thunderbolt ports, and you also have an SD card slot, an HDMI, and the HDMI now supports 2.1. On the Mac mini side of things, these updates have also been transferred over with the Wi-Fi 6E and the HDMI 2.1, which now supports an 8K display or 4K at 240. But the biggest update of all is in the processors. I'm gonna say it right now, if you had the previous generation MacBook Pro, for the most part, you're not really going to need to go ahead and upgrade because the performance honestly was already really good. But if you wanna go ahead and max it out to 96 gigabytes of unified memory on the MacBook side, you definitely have the option to now, which is great but the M2 Pro, the M2 Max processor definitely have some performance upgrades when it comes to the benchmark. So I would say you should go ahead and do your research because there are just so many different comparisons that I can't fit into a segment of this video. But what is also really exciting about the Mac mini side is that it starts at a price of $599 in the US, and if you go ahead and use the education discount, it's even less. And I mean, the Apple Silicon just continues to progress, and these upgrades are definitely ones that present a lot of options for consumers and creatives, as well as professionals out there looking for an incredibly powerful machine at prices that I think are a lot more reasonable than ever before. So if you guys wanna check out my full review and unboxings of these products, they're on the channel, but I think these are definitely some cool tech items that had a lot of great backend improvements.
So in the world of smartwatches, one thing that I really like seeing is that the design and hardware is increasingly getting better because people who love watches really do appreciate the hardware elements and in a lot of cases are willing to pay for it. This right here is the Huawei Watch GT3 Pro in the titanium model that features a 1.43 inch display with a 466 by 466 AMOLED display. This is a display that looks really good. And when it comes to like the actual interface and being able to scroll along the side of it, I feel like it's a really good size and they've utilized that space quite effectively to not only make it a stylish watch, but also one that has a nice interface to be able to interact with. The other aspect is just when it comes to the hardware. The titanium model is one that is super light. It's beautifully polished in like a nice satin finish. And you can choose between different band options, but if you just want like a nice sporty hybrid that keeps the weight down, but it's very durable on an everyday basis, then this silicone band right here is a great option. And with the size, you're able to interact, but also view all the information very effectively. And it does feel like a very full experience that you don't exactly get on all smartwatches out there because this is compatible with iOS and Android. But this is definitely a premium watch. And the most impressive thing about it is that the battery life claim is two weeks. When it comes to the hardware experience, this is definitely one of the most complete that I've tested out. And whether you're on an iPhone or an Android device, being able to use it universally and having more options out there is always nice. So another really exciting product here is a DJI RS3 Mini. For any creators out there, DJI has really been pushing the boundaries of different pieces of equipment that are usually for professionals for the average consumer to use over the years. But more specifically, what I really like about the last couple years is that they've also been making products that focus on vertical content, which is kind of becoming the trend lately. The best part about this gimbal, first off, is that it is almost half the size of the flagship RS3. And of course, that still has a very important important presence in the lineup because for heavier setups, you're gonna need a bigger gimbal. But if you went ahead and purchased a camera like a Sony FX3 or a Sony FX30 or a mirrorless setup that is so capable nowadays from a cinema standpoint, then you don't exactly need a large gimbal with a very heavy payload. And this is able to support about 4.4 pounds. And this is gonna be so useful in our workflow because we have to produce content in both horizontal and vertical formats. So having a camera setup that is ready to go without needing any weird adapters or everything is great. And I think the best part about it is that the price point is relatively affordable for what it is. I believe it comes in in like the $300 range and you can definitely go ahead and accessorize it, but it has all of the best that DJI is able to offer in their experience in the gimbal world and in the stabilization world in the latest and greatest product that you can fit in your suitcase or backpack a lot easier than before. So on the camera side of things, I picked up two new cameras recently. They're gonna to add to our workflow around the world. If you guys know, we've been using the Sony FX3s for the past year now. I can go on and on about these cameras, but it's resulted in the point where we actually have three FX3s now, and I recently went ahead and picked up the FX30. I would say that this is probably the best overall camera for somebody who is looking to spend just under $2,000 for a great camera to start on YouTube or professional video because it gives you great image quality and dynamic range, the dual gain ISO, and also a lot of the great features that you're going to find on the FX3. It is an APS-C size sensor, but the great thing about that is that APS-C lenses, generally speaking, are a lot more affordable for what they're able to offer and also lighter weight. The camera itself weighs about 70 grams lighter than its FX3, even though it has the same form factor, but the lens selections are also lighter and the lenses that I picked up so far are the 10 to 18 as well as the 18 to 135 and this is going to be a really good run and gun general vlogging workflow that we're just going to bring around with us everywhere especially when it comes to travel. The other camera that I also picked up is a Sony ZV-1. This came out a few years ago, but I feel like it's been a lot more popular lately in conjunction with the FX3 and the FX30. And even though it doesn't really make sense for most day-to-day -day usage, it is still an extra step below in terms of size compared to the FX30 that we can either use for vlogging, but specifically for sporting events. At the FIFA World Cup, for example, and at NBA games, I wasn't allowed to bring any camera with a lens. And so this is a camera that has a fixed 24 to 70, but the reason why I really like it is because it also records in S-Log3, which means I can grade all of the footage in conjunction with the FX30 and the FX3 footage in a film to get that similar color tone and look. Thank you. 
So the next set of products right here is a little bit more niche, but it's been a big part of our travel films, and that is the FPV drone setup. In our travel films in Barcelona, as well as Germany with the concept cars, these are things that we've integrated into our intros and the cinematic experience, and it's almost like a new dimension. And there's been a few really good pieces of DJI drone equipment that have come out specifically for FPV that have not only improved our workflow, but also improved the reliability of going with FPVs. Here you have a much smaller headset that just looks a lot better and it's much easier to travel with compared to the previous generation. But I think the most important upgrade that we've made is the O3 unit. This right here is a new camera and transmission unit that eliminates some of the biggest problems with FPV drones and that is losing signal and having rough signal in different places. This new O3 unit has up to 10 kilometers of transmission and a very low latency, but it also gives you better image quality to have more accurate flying experience, but most importantly, more reliable. On top of that though, you're actually able to record video directly on the O3's camera with up to 20 gigabytes of storage built in and record at a 4K resolution in the Cinelike D DJI profile. Having a secondary stream of video in 4K and in that codec is really, really valuable. And so that has been like an overall up Grade that we've made to our entire FPV setup. And I hope you guys are gonna look forward to a lot of the other travel films that we have this year that are going to feature footage from this improved setup. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching this Cool Tech episode. And we're just in the process of getting my new office ready. And as soon as that is ready, we're able to launch so many new series that are very diverse in different types of themes, whether it is desk setups, EDC, colored themes of tech and more. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. We've got a ton of travel coming up as well. So I've got so much to show you soon. And if you guys enjoy this video, drop a like as always, and I'll see you all in the next one.